Good morning, everybody. Boy, I tell you what. God bless all of you. Good to see you today. Yeah, good to see you. Man, I'm a little hungry. I don't know why. I don't know. Hey, we had Sunday school class over there, and they kept bringing in all this food and all this kind of stuff. I got one of Jim Farrell's pies while we oh, were in over there. Yeah. yeah, I just took it out the car. Well, it had clock, pastor on it. I thought that's what it The yeah. clock says 11, but I think it's 12, after 12. Yeah, it seems like it, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, all right, but it's good to see you, everybody. Veterans Day, we're celebrating Veterans, Veterans Day, Day celebration. Yeah. It's this week, but we so wanted to do it today. Let's give all the veterans a yeah. hand right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. We'll, be, we'll recognize them again later. Yeah. But I'm always reminded of a couple of stories on Veterans Day. Are you yeah. reminded? What kind of stories are well, you, you know, reminded John, of? When he, uh, yeah. Brother John, when he was yeah. in the Army, he'd, when he went there, basic training, went yeah. out there on the foreign range and yeah. first time. And, yeah. Boy, that rifle ready, and boy, he fired that shot. And his instructor came back and said, man, good news. Man, you hit the bullseye. Bad news, you hit someone else's target. <laughs> that boy got off a little bit. But. Yeah, that's John, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a, anyway. he, he still struggles. Yeah. Yeah. Then, you know, there's Willie back there. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know about I'm, Willie, too, in yeah. the service, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, before you even said it, he said he shot expert. Oh, yeah. Okay. Or All did right. he shoot an expert, or did he shoot expert? You know, when Willie graduated from high school, I'm sure it wasn't his first choice to go in there into the steamy jungle of Vietnam. Yeah. But, you know, he got invited. So, yeah. So yeah. he went over to Vietnam. And a lot of tough days over there. But one day he got this nice package from his sweetheart, Marlene. You know, yeah. Marlene. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a nice package. Yeah. Beautiful package. And anyway, opened it up, and there's... Uh, some home baked goods in a Tupperware bowl and everything. And then, anyway, there was a note in there that said, When you get through with this, would you please send the bowl back? <laughs> you, know, you got to do, yeah. do the Tupperware. But anyway, the old yeah. Tupperware. Boy, you yeah. ever think about that? Wonder who somebody come up and figure out how to discover how you can find the lids. To those yeah. Tupperware bowls, be, to match them. Yeah. yeah, they could discover the socks, that uh, other the sock. Dryer, that yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But anyway, so. good to see everybody out today. All right. All right. You let's ready for church? We're ready. You have anything church? else? No, we're ready for church. All right, let's have church and let's worship. We're going right. to worship the Lord Jesus, going to honor our uh, veterans, and uh, it's just going to be a great day yeah. today. Yeah, if we would, let us stand. Broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rock is replaced, the bombs burst, we Please remain standing as we say the pledge to the flag.
pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Let's sing the chorus of How Great Thou Art, shall we? Then sings my soul. Father, we thank you for today and for every day that you give us. These days are precious because time is precious. And Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here in your house, worshiping together, praying together, fellowshipping together. And I thank you, Father, for the Lord Jesus and our salvation through him. And I pray that in everything we do today, he is lifted up. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our worship. And Father, we just pray for every person here today, whatever needs they have, we pray that through Christ you would meet those needs. We pray especially if there's someone here without the Lord Jesus that today they would be saved. And Father, we pray for our veterans. We thank you so much for them. We thank you for the sacrifice of time of suffering of all that they've gone through and for those who paid the ultimate price father we just thank you they have guarded us and protected us and kept us free and father we just honor them we thank you for them and i pray you'd bless them on this special day and father i just ask that you would encourage us 
And these are perilous times, and the church needs to be the church. And I pray that we will all step forward, report to duty, and go out into the harvest and reach people with the gospel, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please bless our service. Anoint everything we do that would bring you glory and lift up Jesus. And we pray in his name. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. Before y'all may be seated. Could, could we have our veterans? Uh, we'd like to recognize them at this time. If you, if you can, please come up. Uh, four of you would just line up here in the front. If not, please raise your hand. We're going to recognize you. All right. We want to come back. Please, if you, if you can. Yeah, come on up if you're a veteran. If you can, come on up forward if you would, please. I know Brother Danny. We're going to get that Brother Danny right there. You just stay seated, brother. John, if you would, come up. and Please recognize. Man, we got a good, good group. Great looking bunch. <laughs> Let's go down the list here real quick. And uh, if you would, give us your name and when you served and what branch. Okay, I'm Jim Kirk, U.S. Army in 1962 and 63. Amen. You know what? We had some placemats made for these guys to show uh, their appreciation, our, our Sunday school and Wednesday night kids, for service. So when you set that on your table, and when you take a look at that, you'll know that you're appreciated. Brother Jim? United States Army, 1958 to 64. MOS. Sergeant. Amen, brother. Appreciate you. <laughs> brother Donnie. Donnie Razor served in the Army 1967 to 69. Six, served in Vietnam in 68 and 69. I was scout section leader in Armor Cap, too. Amen, brother. Appreciate you. <laughs> Brother Danny. Danny Thomas, U.S. Navy, 63 to 67. Amen, brother. Appreciate you. <laughs> Willie. Willie Wilson, U.S. Army. I served in Vietnam 1970. Uh, went in the Army in 70 and 71. Amen, brother. Appreciate you. <laughs> Kenny. Kenneth Bashers, U.S. Army, 1966 and 67 in Vietnam. Man, brother, appreciate you. Jamie? Jamie Baker, Kentucky Army National Guard, 201st Engineers, 1979 to 1995. Thank you, brother. Brother Jim? Jim Hagerman served 1971 to 1973 in 85th Combat Engineers. Appreciate you, brother. Brother? Richard Franklin, United States Army, United States Air Force, United States Navy, 1974 to 1994. Amen, brother. Appreciate you. Brother Hector. Hector O'Callan, 1986 to 1994, uh, U.S. Army, uh, Desert Storm, 1990 to 1992. Amen, brother. Appreciate you. Hey, brother. Orwell Howe, U.S. Army, 67, 68, and 69. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Brother? United States Air Force, 1962. 
Amen, brother. Appreciate it. Harold Williams, National Guard, 1958 to 1964. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Brother? Gene Murray, United States Air Force Strategic Air Command, 1955-1959. Yeah, brother. Joseph Rhodes, <laughs> Signal Corps. In 1952 to 1954. U.S. 50, U.S. 6, 166663. Amen, brother. Appreciate. You know you have a you have a lot of sixes in that serial number. I, I wonder about that. <laughs> Richard. Bless you, brother. <laughs> Have I missed any? Richard Ambergy. Richard Ambergy. I served in Vietnam, and I served in the U.S. Army from 1966 to 1968. Thank you, brother. Are there others around that we've missed? Are there others? I'm a class of 1975 to 1998 with a total of 22 years uh, active and reserve active. So it's a good, good class. Boy, are there others? Well, we sure appreciate all of our veterans. If you would, just show your appreciation. Bye. 
if the things were gone tomorrow, I'd work for all my life, and I had to start all over with just my children and my wife. I'd thank my lucky stars to be living here today. Cause this flag still stands for freedom And you can't take that away Proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the man who died Who gave that right to me And I gladly stand There ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. Across the plains and highways, from sea to shine. Detroit down to Houston, from New York to L.A. There's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say, I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I'm glad to be the men who died and gave that God bless the USA. We need his blessings. But we, um, just as we honor our veterans um, today, a very, very special group of people. You know, as soldiers for Christ, uh, there are veterans uh, in our service uh, that are They've, they've been serving the Lord Jesus for a long, long time. And uh, we honor them too, all you veterans of Christ. And I want to talk to you this morning about good soldiers for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to use the analogy of our veterans, our, our soldiers, and, and what they have, what it means to be a, a good soldier and then what it means to be a good soldier for the Lord Jesus Christ. They're basically the same things as you look at this. In 2 uh, Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, starting in verse 1, it says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth, no one who is at war, entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. 
Father, we thank you for your word. It is powerful, it is living, and it is truth. And Father, I pray that as we study together, that every word spoken is yours and not mine. And I pray that all of us who are saved would realize that we are soldiers for the Lord Jesus in a spiritual warfare. I pray if there's anyone here that does not know Christ as Savior today, even today, now, they would come to Jesus as Savior. Thank you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. These are definitely perilous times. These are perilous times economically. Uh, these are perilous times as far as civility. Uh, these are perilous times in many ways, but most importantly, these are perilous times spiritually. When you read in 2 Timothy 3, it says that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Amen. Surely, as we look at the signs, and Jesus said, no one knows the day and the hour. No one knows. But he did tell us to watch the signs. He said to his disciples and to us, watch, because you don't know when it's coming. If, if we knew when it was coming, then th there'd be people who wouldn't even be saved until they'd try to wait till the last minute, not knowing death could overtake them. Yeah. Or we as Christians, we'd wait till the last minute to try to do some things to please him when we stood before him. But the deal is, we don't know. We know beyond any doubt he is coming back. Amen. We know by, uh, by, uh, without any doubt he is coming for the church, for the saved, to take us home to be with him. But in the meantime, in these last days, as we watch the signs that Jesus gave us, that the scriptures gave us, and so many of them are in 2 Timothy 3, so many signs about the last days. And, and, and the Bible says perilous times will come, and they're here. These are surely the last days and so for these perilous times we need to be the kind of soldier that would please the Lord Jesus Christ we are called we are called into a spiritual warfare the only thing that can change our culture the only thing that can change the people in our country is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we appreciate good, godly, um, even Christian uh, leaders who are elected. We appreciate what they can do uh, as, as far as any laws or things like that. We appreciate that. But the only thing that changes people is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And it is sinful sinful for us to wait around and and want someone else to do our job say something we're not supposed to wait around and hope that politicians and leaders and other people will do our job we're supposed to do our job I bet you if you talked to Nick Saban this morning, he would say, somebody last night didn't do their job. I guarantee you he'd say on that last play in overtime, he'd say, somebody didn't do their job. What's happened to our world is that we didn't do our job. Because Jesus said when he left, Go into all the world and preach the gospel or give the gospel to every creature. And when we stopped doing that, then the world started filling in the vacuum with their own selves and, and, and their own wants and even their own gods. And so we need to be good soldiers in the harvest 
for the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's look at some things as we honor our veterans today. Let's talk about what good soldiers do. Something about good soldiers. One, they have a calling. Now it says in verse 4 of our text, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. That he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. A soldiers have a calling. Uh, as uh, uh, I think David was talking up here about Brother Willie, he said he was invited to go. He was called to go. A soldiers have a calling. They have a calling that is bigger than themselves. They have a calling to protect our country to protect us from enemies to to protect our freedoms protect our citizens as Christians we have a calling the Lord Jesus Christ has saved us and sent us to preach the gospel the Lord Jesus has sent us into the harvest. He has sent us to be ambassadors. He has sent us to be salt and light. And our calling is bigger than ourselves. Now listen. It's not about you. I, I hope that doesn't offend you. I hope you agree with that. It's not about you. Even the church service, when you come to the church service, it's not about you. So if you don't hear the song you don't want, or the scripture you don't want, or this or that, it's not about you. It's about Him. It's about pleasing Him. It's about pleasing Him with your heart. It's about pleasing Him with your spirit. It's about pleasing Him when you come in to worship Him. Whatever's going on, you worship Him. As soldiers, as good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have a higher calling. And it is to go out into the world serving the Lord Jesus Christ. It's bigger than us. Number two, soldiers accept their assignment. I guarantee you that if you talk to the veterans here today, they would tell you that they didn't always get to do what they wanted to do. And I bet there are some who would tell you that maybe their uh, recruitment office said, hey, this is great. Uh, the, you're going to get to go to these places and, and it's going to be really good and then they found themselves in Vietnam or in the desert somewhere or in places they never imagined they would be or wanted to be. But they accepted their assignment because their assignment is bigger than themselves. In Ephesians chapter 4, In Ephesians chapter 4, it speaks a, a bit to this when it says that there's, there's gifts that we have. And let me just say that there's differences in commands and gifts. All of us are commanded, for instance, to proclaim the gospel. You, there is a gift of evangelism. But that's a special gift that, that people are able to reach people or present the gospel in certain ways. But all of us have a command to go proclaim the gospel. So there are commands and then there are gifts. And then there's things that all of us are supposed to do. And so here's, here's the way this passage works in Ephesians 4. Look at this in verse 11. 
it says in talking about gifts, at the end of this it says, and some pastors and teachers, or the term is pastor-teacher. So this is my calling. This is my gift, is pastor-teacher. Now that's a Holy Spirit calling, is pastor-teacher. And then it goes on to say, for the equipping of the saints. The saints are you. Anyone who is saved is a saint. It's not someone who's a special, I want to introduce to you, teaching your class this morning, is Saint Jim Hagerman. If you'll come Wednesday night, St. Alan Wells will teach the class. All of us, all saints, are that's just a, a term for the saved. All of us who are saved, that's referred to as saints. So it's nothing special about you. It's something special about him. That we're all saved by grace through faith. In the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen. So it says for the equipping of the saints. For the work. Here we go. For the work of the ministry. To build up. For the edifying or to build up the church. So listen. Here's your assignment. To do the work of the church. To do the work of the ministry. To build up the church. Now that means numerically and spiritually. We're to make disciples. We can't make converts. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. When we trust Christ as Savior, the Holy Spirit gives us the born-again experience. We're born into God's family. But the work of the church is to make disciples, to train, to teach, to equip. And so my assignment is to preach and teach. Your assignment is to do the work of the ministry to build up the church. That's what it says. You read in Ephesians. Sorry about that. You read in Ephesians. That's what the Bible says. And so you need to accept, all of us, accept our assignment. If I didn't preach and teach, I would be AWOL from the the army of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're not doing your assignment, doing your work, using your gift, your AWOL, from the army of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we accept our assignment. Thirdly, good soldiers are faithful. They report to duty. They always show up. They always do their job. That's who we need to be. You know what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4, 2? It says this about stewards or, or about the servants of the Lord Jesus. It says that they, are, that they are counted to be faithful. All that, listen, all that the Lord Jesus is looking for you from, uh, uh, from you is your faithfulness. And the next one we'll have is obedience. That's what he wants from you. Whatever he has called you to do, however man may classify it as as big or small, important or unimportant, to the Lord Jesus, they're all important. And he's going to look at you and say and, and judge whether you were faithful or not. Did you show up? Did you do your job? What if the soldiers, let's just think about this. This is probably not going to go over so well. This is probably not a good example. But what if, the, what if our soldiers, what if our army was as faithful as the church? We sleep at night because we know our, we, we know our soldiers are on their job. We can rest easy knowing. That if there's something, a blip, even a blip that shows up on a radar screen, on a satellite uh, 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 screen, whatever it's called, even a blip, jets are in the air, people are on guard, and we rest. 
There's not one of us are worried today that our soldiers aren't on their job. We need to be the same way. What if we, what if our army was as faithful to the work God has given to us as, as the church? Wow. None of us would sleep at night. We'd wonder how many soldiers are missing. How many soldiers went somewhere else rather than than to church or to their job. Yeah, I knew it wouldn't go over well. <laughs> I'm just telling you, we are soldiers for the Lord Jesus Christ, and we need to always show up and do our jobs, whatever God has given to us. Soldiers, good soldiers, are obedient. Now, this means two things. I think, one, they trust their commander, and two, they want, to pr- they want to please their commander. In verse 4 again, it says, No man that warth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. The Lord Jesus Christ has died for our sins he rose again he saved us when we trusted him as savior he gives us grace to sustain us he meets our needs he never ever ever he never abandons us never ever so we can trust him we can trust him you may think well i can't do that job trust him you can you can with his help Whatever, wherever he sends you, whatever he gives you to do, he'll give you the grace to do it. Good soldiers are obedient. Jesus even said, if you love me, keep my commandments. It's hard to express how much we love the Lord Jesus when we're disobedient to his commands. He said, if you love me. He didn't say, if you love me, testify. If you love me, sing. If you love me, preach. If you love me, this. If you love me, that. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. It's as simple as that. Good soldiers are obedient. They trust their commander, and they want to please him. Good soldiers love their country. No question. Ask these guys who are up here. Ask them. They love their country. They serve because they love their country. The country for us as Christians is the church. The church is our command center. This is where we get our orders. This is where we get our assignments. I'm not talking about orders from me. So if you're thinking, if you're judging me back there saying, yeah, look at him. Haughty as he can be. Tell us he's going to tell us what to do. I'm just telling you what he said for you to do. I don't have anything for you to do. You're not mine. You're on your own. I'm telling you what he told me to tell you. And you are sheep in this, in, in this command center. And so is your shepherd. My job is to lead, feed, and protect you. So I'm telling you what the Lord Jesus has said. And the church, the church is our command center. The church is where we get our orders. The church is where we get our assignment. The church, we should love our church. Jesus loved his church. How much? He gave his life for it. You can't take church lightly. He loved his church.
Good soldiers love their country. Good soldiers for Christ love their church. And then lastly, good soldiers depend on their team. You can call it a platoon. Uh, you can call it a squad. I, I don't know in all the armed forces what those teams are. But they're teams of soldiers who depend upon each other. They can't go it alone. They depend upon each other. As church, listen, we depend upon each other. When someone's missing in action, it hurts. Now, do we always do what we should do as far as following up or checking on? I'm sure we don't. But your responsibility is not to me. It's to him. It's to the Lord Jesus. And so the Bible gives us uh, the, uh, the, the command, the, the encouragement, that there's some things we're supposed to do for one another. These are not my words. These are the words of God. I keep looking at that clock back there, and it's not gotten to the time yet. So I know you're really nervous about the meal, but you've got all afternoon. So give me a, give me a break here. I'm going to take just five more minutes. These are the words of God concerning our team, one another. And the Bible says, Jesus said, here's a new commandment I'm giving you, love one another. And let us, it says in Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, and let us consider one another to provoke. And that word means stir up, provoke, stir up, poke the bear. Provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. These are perilous times. The last day is approaching. The Lord Jesus is coming soon. And so the Bible says there are three things we need to provoke one another to do. Three things that we're to encourage one another. And the word provoke means stir up. So if you have to poke the bear wake the bear up then poke the bear provoke the bear stir up one another sometimes we go to sleep sometimes we're not paying attention so we have to stir each other up we're on a team we work together we have a calling together it takes all of us Three things. Love. We have, to, we, we have to stir each other up and make sure we're loving one another. Make sure we're loving others. And make sure we're loving even our enemies. That's what Jesus said, his very words. We are to love one another. We're to love others others out there whoever they are and we're to love even our enemies those are the direct words of the lord jesus christ all of those if someone's not doing that poke the bear stir them up let them know there's no room for hate we have to be like the lord jesus christ they absolutely brutalized him. They disfigured him. And the first words out of his mouth from the cross, forgive them. Forgive them. Secondly, good works. We're not saved by works, but we're saved to do works. To do good works Everyone is to do good works. And in Titus chapter 3, 
It says in verse 8, this is a faithful saying, and, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God, the saved, might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Our good works lead people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Provoke one another as good soldiers to good works. And then number three, faithful attendance. The, the wording here in this, in, in the text that I gave you where it says, and forsake not the assembling of ourselves together, the, the, the language of that, in the original language is an admonition that it, it means more than just attending every once in a while. It means faithful attendance. Now listen, as Christians we are called to be good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. We all have a calling. We need to accept that assignment. We need to be faithful. We need to be obedient. We need to love the church. And we need to depend on one another. Let's be good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's be serious about this. These are last days. And soon we'll be standing before our Savior. And we want to say to him. We want to hear him say to us. Well done. Good and faithful servant. If you're here without the Lord Jesus today as your Savior and Lord, you need to be saved. The reason we talk about these things in church, about what we should be doing, is so we'll reach you. Because if we don't do our job, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And so we've got to get to you and give you the Word of God. Now today you've heard, Jesus loves you. He died for your sins. He rose again. He's the only Savior, the only way to heaven. And you need to come to Him by faith, accepting Him as Savior, repenting of your sins, and trusting Jesus. That's the only way you'll ever see heaven. And so you have no excuse about not being saved. And so today, our prayer for you, there's two, there's two things we ought to be praying for. One is we pray for you to be saved. And two, that we pray that we'll do what we need to do to see you and others saved. We're in a spiritual warfare. And what's at stake are the souls of men, women, boys, and girls. We need to do our job. We need to show up and do our job. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for this time in your word. And Father, I pray now for the Holy Spirit to work and for people to listen to what he says. He may be convicting people their need to be saved. He may be convicting people who need to accept their assignment who need to show up, who need to do their jobs. I pray, Father, that however you're speaking to our hearts, that we will be obedient. We pray for the unsaved. We pray for the saved. We pray that all of us want to please the Lord Jesus. And we pray in his name, amen. Would you please stand quietly, reverently? <clears throat> let, me ask you to, let me ask you to stand heads bowed, eyes closed. Uh, uh, just as David sings this psalm.